Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to use Universal Audio's Council software. Let's start by powering up our Apollo interface and opening up Council. Now that Council is open, let's start here on the left. We have the session name, we have different sections of our channel strip, and different ways to view the channel strip. Further down here we also have some modifiers. So the way that Council works is it uses an analog style top-down workflow. So at the very beginning you have a slot for a Unison plugin and then your preamp section. And then after that you have a slot for inserts, so other plugins that you might want to use. After that you can choose whether you want to record with effects or just monitor. From there we have the send section, and then after that we have cues, and then finally we have the uh, level, pan, solo, and mute for each channel right here on the bottom. The Universal Audio Ecosystem allows you to record and monitor at extremely low latency. It does this with onboard DSP on the interface itself. It replaces your DAW software monitoring and all live inputs are handled in console. Let me show you how to disable software monitoring in Logic Pro. In Logic Pro, go to Settings, Audio, General, and uncheck software monitoring. All right, let's look at the top of the channel strip here. We have something called a Unison slot. And what that is, is Apollo's Unison technology, which is their analog to digital integration. Essentially what it does is it allows you to add a guitar amp or a pedal or a mic preamp. And in Apollo, it's going to actually emulate the physical hardware. So it's gonna faithfully reproduce the sound of your favorite amplifier or your favorite mic preamp. And the way it does it is that it actually changes the characteristics of your input preamp. So it changes the impedance and it changes the gain staging. If you guys are interested in how this works and you want me to do a deeper dive, leave a comment below and I'll make a video on it. So I'll go ahead and I will add a Unison plugin here. I'm going to grab my Sir PT100 amplifier and it adds it. All right, let's get into this preamp section a little more. So I have my Unison plugin, my PT100 amp head. So it would make sense that that is going to be used for my guitar. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my guitar in the front of my interface and watch what happens when I do that. You see our input switch is now from mic to high Z, or high impedance input. So now my, my guitar is plugged in. Um, you'll also notice that a couple of the options went away. The 48 volt phantom power option and the pad option. Um, what 48 volt phantom power is used for is if you have a condenser microphone. Um, since we're not using a microphone in channel 1 or analog 1, that goes away. And then the pad option actually is to attenuate your signal. So if you're using a really good sensitive microphone, it will actually attenuate the, sig the signal. So it'll take off um, 20 dB off the signal so you don't clip if you're using a sensitive microphone. Uh, those don't apply anymore since we're using a guitar input here. The other two options here are a polarity so uh, that's going to be used uh, to avoid phase cancellation so that would be more if you're using um, like a microphone or two microphones and you're recording the same source so you're not uh, getting phase cancellation essentially losing harmonic information so that's when when you would want to enable that and then this right here um, is a essentially a high pass filter so if you're recording bass, for example, it's going to eliminate 
any low bass rumble or noise. A couple more notes in the preamp section before we move on. Um, you can switch from mic to line level input by just clicking right here. And then on your interface, if you hit the preamp switch, it will actually highlight what channel you're on. We see this indicator right here lights up that's telling us we're on channel one now. And now over here we're on channel two. For those of you who actually want to see where your gain is at, uh, in a numeric value, like the decibel level, if you just click on the dial here, it will show you what that is. So in this case for channel 2, it's 45 dB. And then you can change your gain on your interface, and the level here will correspond to what you're changing it to on the front of your interface, and vice versa. So I can change it from my interface, or I could actually change it from here as well. Okay, on the left side here we have ways to look at different parts of the channel strip. So if we want to see just inserts, just sends, or just cues. If we want it to collapse all the sections, you can hit close, or open everything back up, and then you have the choice between large icons or smaller icons. Smaller icons will allow you to see more of your channel strip. For inserts, you have the option to view all available insert slots, and those are four per channel. So if you hit fix slots, it will show you all four at once. I went ahead and put a compressor in my first slot already. Uh, let me show you how to do that. So I hit the plus sign. I'm gonna actually search for it here. LA2A, and I'm gonna go with this one right here. And it added it in for me. On my second channel, I can also add an insert. So this will be for vocals. And let me go ahead and add uh, LA610B preamp. And there I went ahead and added it. What I'd like to do now is show you these modifiers. Uh, what these are is just a fast way to enable and disable plugins, remove them, copy them to different channel strips, that kind of thing. So we'll start with the power modifier. You see what happens is that it kind of illuminates the power icon for all your plugins. So if you wanted to power them up, turn them on rather, you can just click on them or turn them off, I suppose. I think they're on in my case. But you could power them on and off like that. And then I believe we can swipe to, let's see. Yes, you can. So if you wanted to, you could just hold down your mouse and swipe over and it'll power them on and off that way. If we want to remove a plugin, it gives you the option to remove it now. I'll get rid of that redundant LA2A. That's how you would do that. If we want to copy a plugin, we would just hit this copy modifier, click and drag, and then hit paste. The isolate button isolates a channel. So if you hit the isolate button, then you could pick one channel that you want to isolate. Perhaps we want to focus just on our vocals and it would isolate just that channel for us. Finally, we have set default. Now what this does is it changes our settings back to default and it's gonna to pertain to your level faders, your pan uh, on your channels, that sort of thing. So it doesn't apply to your preamp section at all. It's gonna focus more on this down here, this area down here. And then I believe, um, also the sun section and the Q section. Let's see. So if I hit set default, by clicking on these, they should go back to their default values, and they do. Now these buttons do time out, so 
You may have to do this a couple times. And that's how the default button works. A couple other notes to add on our insert section. You can choose to either record or monitor with your effects by using the insert effects button. And there's one on each channel strip. You can also change them all globally if you go to the right on the monitor section. One exception to this are Unison plugins. When you use a Unison plugin, it will always get recorded because it's affecting the sound on the input stage of the preamp. If you don't want to record with Unison plugins, either don't put them in a slot or turn them off. In addition to adding plugins in individually, we can also choose to add in an entire signal chain. To do so, click the plus icon next to the inserts label. Choose your signal chain. And we can see that our channel strip is updated with all the plugins that are part of that chain. Guys, I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. Stay tuned for part two, where I talk about sends, cues, and I go over the monitor output section. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.